which leads to one of the coolest things to, you're going to hear about tonight, I think, is um, from Lindsay Ware, who is from Conservation Dogs, or sorry, she's the founder of Science Dogs of New England, um, with a BS in wildlife biology and an MS in biology from the University of Western Ontario. So for many years, she traveled across the US and Canada working as a wildlife researcher for several conservation agencies, including Ducks Unlimited, which as an aside is like the best name ever for a group, <laughs> um, the US Fish and Wildlife Service and the Connecticut Department of Environmental Protection. She also held roles at the Jackson Laboratory, including in research and development, which uh, made her realize, as she said, that her happiest science moments were when she was exploring research methods and figuring out the most effective ways of collecting data. Um, Lindsay has been working, has worked with dogs for conservation purposes since 2011, and she's been a professional dog trainer specializing in science-based training methods since 2013. In 2018, she started Science Dogs of New England and began training scent detection dogs to assist biologists with data collection. Um, as an aside, Lindsay was a guest on the Main Science Podcast in August 2022. If you want to know what makes scientists tick and kind of hear how they got into it, I, uh, it's available in all your podcast places. You can follow and subscribe and listen to some really great conversations with remarkable people in Maine. Um, when I asked Lindsay for her pop culture, she said it has to be the old PBS show from the 80s, Wild America. So here's a quote. I would always watch it with my father as a very young kid, and instead of showing exotic wildlife from all over the world, like most nature shows at the time, it focused on the North American wildlife right under our noses, which is actually really cool. So take it away, Lindsay. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, Kate. All right, so whenever I start to explain or try to explain what it is that I do, I find myself assuring everybody that this is, in fact, a real scientific field. And I'm not just using this as an excuse to take my dog to work with me every day. <laughs> um, conservation scent detection just kind of flies under the radar a little bit uh, compared to probably the more well-known areas of scent detection that you're probably familiar with. Drug sniffing dogs, bomb sniffing dogs, human remains detection. Uh, these are all fields where we got all of our ideas from, but instead of looking for those types of subjects, uh, we train dogs to find data in the environment, basically. So we consider these guys nose-assisted data collectors. They're out there detecting data for us. So what are conservation dogs out there finding for us? Well, they can be trained for a variety of different targets. Every time I say the word target here, what I'm talking about is just whatever it is the dog is trained to find. In the environment, in theory, if it has an odor, a dog could be trained to find it. This can be animal carcasses, live animals, plants, fungus, bacteria, uh, and scat is actually a pretty popular one. <laughs> When we train these guys to go out and help us detect data, one of the biggest training um, aspects that we do is teaching the dogs that these odors are really important to them. The dogs don't normally care about an invasive plant, right? But we make them care because we teach them that, hey, when you find this target, you get your favorite reward. And for all of my dogs, it's always playing with their ball or playing tug. It could also be a food reward. So when I do these talks, I always say, like, oh, it's, we're sniffing for science. Um, not really from the dog's point of view. That's kind of a fib. The dogs, unfortunately, I'm going to break it to you, do not care about our science. <laughs> they want their ball, and they want it now. Another big aspect of training these dogs is to teach them to very clearly tell us that they found the thing that they are looking for, and ideally, they're going to point out exactly where it is in a very non-invasive way. So this can be a down. This can be sitting and staring at the, at the target. Um, here, this is me and my dog, Chili Bean. We're out in the field. She's about to find a target. And she is going to lay down uh, to tell me that she found the target. And <coughs> then I'm going to go over and give her her very favorite tug toy that we're going to play with. Good girl. <laughs> I'm going to spend the rest of my time talking about the Maine Wood Turtle Project, because this is the project that we are spending most of our time on these days. 
The Maine Turtle Project is administered by the Center for Wildlife Studies, along with the University of Maine as a major partner. Uh, this is, again, Chili Bean. This is a turtle that she found. And Dr. Matt Chatfield here of UMaine, one of the co-PIs of the project, is uh, taking data on this turtle, uh, along with the other co-PI, uh, Dr. Cheryl Frederick. A few quick things about wood turtles. This is a really cool wood turtle, uh, turtle species that we have here in Maine. Um, they are a species of special concern, so unfortunately their populations aren't doing great. Something that's really neat about them is that they are semi-terrestrial, uh, but that is a problem sometimes when you're trying to research them. When they're up on land a lot, they can be hard to see. They're very cryptic. And often when they're right in front of our noses, you can't see them. And they're not usually in front of our noses anyway. They like to hide in, in vegetation. Another problem with researching these guys is that their juvenile phase is they can be very, very small. And if an animal is small, they're going to be harder to find. So what we discovered is that these dogs are able to be trained to detect this species quite well. And uh, from our data from the last few years, we found that dogs are better at detecting turtles than humans. So we have, uh, in the blue here, we have scent detection dogs. In the red, we have human detection rates. And one of the most exciting findings that we're having from this work <coughs> is the, the very tiny juvenile turtles. So we have reason to suspect that humans are really biased against being able to see these tiny turtles but we are, are discovering that the dogs can sniff them out quite well. The brush pile on the left is the actual brush pile where a uh, chili bean there detected that very tiny juvenile turtle. And that's it. Thank you very much. Oh, I can't leave that. I was just about to leave. How do your dogs know when they are working and when they aren't? Like, is every walk that you take with your dog interminable because they are always looking for a thing? Or Funny you should ask. I do have one dog like that, and she's always working. But generally, um, we have something called cues that we use. And these are, like, if you've ever seen a service dog that wears a special vest, and when they're in that special vest, they know they're, they're working and on duty. It's kind of the same idea with our dogs. Um, they have special equipment that we put on. They know the routine. Uh, the dogs really, I mean, they know kind of where we're going. I, I have one dog that I, I swear she knows the route to one of our turtle sites, and she starts kind of whining as soon as we hit a certain road. So they pick up on, on things. How long does it take to train a dog to, for one scent? So, like if I was going to add a new target order Yeah, like dog, if you were going to say, find all the poison ivy in this right. plot. So if I had an already, a dog that was already trained in scent detection and I wanted to teach her for poison ivy, um, it's ridiculous how quickly it will happen. So probably in the first training session, she'll start to be able to recognize that odor. There's a lot more training that needs to get done before we'd go in the field. But dogs are really willing. Like, if you teach them, hey, here's another odor that's going to earn your ball, they'll be like, OK, let's, let's do it. Like, I, I, yeah, so they, they learn really quickly. These are really highly, highly motivated dogs. Um, so how, two questions. One is, yeah. how many dogs have you trained so far? And are you just training them for here in Maine, or are you helping other organizations train them for this? Um, so, of my own dogs, uh, I've had three dogs trained in scent detection. I do assist other organizations um, a little bit, kind of as a consultant with training their dogs, and I um, am also doing a course with Center for Wildlife Studies um, for people that may go on to, to train dogs. What breeds of dogs are really good for this kind of work? <laughs> So it's, it's less about the breed and more about the, the temperament and personality of the dog, but a lot of common conservation dogs are uh, working lines of their breed. So working line Labradors. Um, I have a working line Australian Shepherd that is one of my dogs. Uh, we also like the you know Belgian Malinois, um, the sort of herding dogs, Border Collies. High energy, uh, really driven to work type of dogs. Have you noticed any um, decline in either training ability or scent diversity detection with age? 
of the dogs. Um, so in the age of the dogs, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, not knowing you were um, so most, no, so most of my dogs are, are pretty young still, and um, what we see in these working line breeds is they actually, um, they are so, they're so driven to work that they have, as long as they're healthy, they have pretty long working spans. Um, so I have colleagues that have working line labs that are 10, 11 years old still working, but just, you know, a little slower. 